Hello everyone. I should say welcome to my series about Chopin's posthumous videos. But today we will have no Chopin. We should have Chopin, but my head, my brain and my thoughts are in a completely different place, like probably most of yours in the Ukraine. As you maybe know, maybe you don't know, but I live in Poland, so we have a border uh, with the Ukraine, we are quite close. Mm, now we welcome all the refugees, already more than seven hundred thousands of Ukrainians who came to my country and we are devastated um, seeing what's happening now in 2022 in the 21st century in Europe in Europe which in the past experienced such tragedies many times. It, it's, it's hard even to describe what we all are feeling. And I couldn't record a video about Chopin's music at least this week. My concentration was close to zero. But I decided to show you and make analysis of music from the Ukraine. In a way, this can be also my own personal way to support this country. I have some friends from the Ukraine. One of my students now at the university is also Ukrainian. We have a lot of connections with them and this will be my way of supporting their culture and showing you a very special and very beautiful piece of music written by a composer who was Ukrainian. And even more, there will be a, a cooperation of two Ukrainian artists. Because today I want to present for you uh, the piece that maybe probably you don't know. Um, piece written by Ukrainian composer Mykola Lysenko. Um, and the piece is called a Funeral March, uh, commemorating the 27th anniversary of death of Ukrainian poet Vas Talas Shevchenko, Talas Hrychorovich Shevchenko, the greatest Ukrainian poet. So there is two art, two Ukrainian artists united in a way together in this beautiful piece of art. Now I play for you this piece in its entirety. Knowing that it's a funeral march, we can already feel what is this about. And also we can try to make some analysis if we need, but maybe we don't need. Maybe the only we, what we need is just to connect with all the victims of this terrible war that is happening now to connect with the souls of all those who died, to connect with the suffering of all those who lost their families, their friends, of all those who are escaping, uh, experiencing this terrible drama. <sighs> and just listen to this beautiful uh, music. So I play for you the whole thing and after that I will 
talk a little more about the composer, about the poet. I will read uh, the poetry and make a short analysis of this masterpiece.
Mykola Vitalievich Lysenko, born in March 1842, died in November 1912, was a Ukrainian composer, pianist, conductor and ethnomusicologist. He is regarded as the founder of the National Composers School in the Ukraine. It's very interesting because originally Lysenko was a student of biology at the Kharkiv University. Kharkiv, as we know now, is bombed and very much destroyed in this terrible war. On a scholarship which, which he won from the Russian Music Society, uh, which was, you know, at that time um, starting and um, the directors of this Russian Music Society were brothers uh, Rubinstein, uh, Nikolai and Anton Rubinstein, which he met and he got friends with. Uh, he pursued further professional music studies at the Leipzig Conservatory. And it's there that he understood the importance of collecting, developing and creating Ukrainian music rather than duplicating the work of Western classical composers. Lysenko aimed to establish a Ukrainian national school of music and pursued this with his collection of Ukrainian folk songs for nearly two decades. It's very interesting because he of course, he, he composed um, also operas, but his Ukrainophilic approach to composition was totally not supported by the Russian Imperial Music Society, which promoted a great Russian cultural presence in the Ukraine. As a result, Lysenko severed his relationship with them never to compose any music set to the Russian language, nor allow any translations of his works into the Russian language. Can you believe that? Uh, the Ems Ukas, which banned the use of Ukrainian language in print, was one of the obstacles for Lysenko. He had to publish some of his scores abroad, while performances of his music had to be authorized by the imperial censor. Terrible times and now we are approaching them again? No way. Lysenko's insistence on it being performed in the Ukrainian language, not in the Russian language, prevented the performance of his operas um, from taking place in Moscow, even if Tchaikovsky himself was impressed by the opera Taras Bulba and he wanted it to stage in Moscow, but it was not possible because of the politics. Lysenko later raised the funds to open a Ukrainian school of music, so uh, he is considered as a kind of father of the Ukrainian music and especially of the opera. And this piece of music, um, as I told you, was written in the commemoration of the 27th death anniversary of another great Ukrainian artist, Taras Shevchenko, and the greatest Ukrainian writer and poet. It's very interesting um, because his, um, all his poetry was written in the Ukrainian language, but his, but his novels, his books were written in Russian. So sometimes he's also considered as a uh, half Russian artist, even though he was born in Ukraine and he died in Ukraine and uh, all his poetry talks about his love to his country, his love to the Ukraine. Um, not only was he a poet, he was also a writer, an artist, a public and political figure, 
as well as folklorist and ethnographer. He even was a painter, in a way. Shevchenko's writing formed the foundation for the modern Ukrainian literature to a degree that he is also considered the founder of the modern written Ukrainian language. Um, his influence on Ukrainian culture has been so immense that even during Soviet times the official position was to downplay strong Ukrainian nationalism expressed in his poetry, suppressing any mention of it, and to put an emphasis on the social and anti tsarist aspects of his legacy, the class struggle within the Russian Empire. All, all about him, more, much more about him you can read in the internet. Um, and you can find his poetry written, uh, translated also to English. Of course, not all, but some of, of it definitely, yes. And before we uh, sink into the music and make a short analysis, of course, a sh not like Chopin analysis, just a very short analysis because the piece is itself is very long. And I think that the best analysis of this music is simply the poetry written by uh, Shevchenko. I want to read for you uh, two short poems written by Shevchenko. The first, very famous, is called A Testament. When I die, let me rest, let me lie amidst Ukraine's broad steps. Let me see the endless fields and steep slopes I hold so dear. Let me hear the Dnipro's great roar, and when the blood of Ukraine's foes flows into the blue waters of the sea, that's when I will forget the fields and hills and leave it all and pray to God. Until then, I know no God. So bury me, rise up, and break your chains, water your freedom with the blood of oppressors, and then remember me with gentle whispers and kind words in the great family of the newly free. It seems like it's written today. And I found also another short poem which has no title and it's like that. If only I could see my fields and steppes again. Won't the good Lord let me in my old age be free? I would go to Ukraine. I would go back home. There they would greet me, glad to see the old man. There I would rest, I would pray to God. There I would... But why go on? There will be nothing. How am I to live in slavery with no hope? Do tell me, please lest I go crazy. It's written in 1848, the year of uh, the, the springs of nations in Europe, you know, the, the year of many revolutions. The best analysis of what we've just heard. But what we've just heard, we've heard the funeral march and probably you noticed that in the middle of this funeral march we have a very bright, beautiful uh, music, very warm. And this is the first uh, thing that I thought um, about this composer um, to have inspiration in Chopin's funeral march. So 
of course we can compare because Chopin's funeral march is the most famous funeral march written for piano and Mikola Alisenko for sure knew this piece and we have proof in this music because we have even a quotation of Chopin and this is what I love the most because I can feel deep respect and even deep love uh, to Chopin in this piece but uh, the beginning is like a funeral march but Lysenko uh, decided not to use the same rhythm that many other composers like Beethoven or Chopin this pam pam pa pam pam pa pam we don't have that we simply have very very heavy walking steps slowly you know left and right and left and right in a very sad key of B minor the same key that Chopin used for his heartbreaking prelude knows we have the same key and the same kind of sadness at the beginning very important interesting thing that the first melody that we hear will not appear again in the whole first part of this funeral march it will reappear after the beautiful middle section so let's listen again and I think I will play you the whole piece and in the meantime I will be making an analysis because I don't want this video to be too long so that will make it a little shorter so this is the first theme of the funeral march <sighs> phrase and then it's repeated one octave higher with a little slightly different color now he changed the harmony this first melody which will never appear again in, in the first part and then we have something that is the most important in this first part we have section B let's call it and it is a dialogue and for me when I was thinking while making the analysis of this I thought that this is maybe in the composer's mind is the dialogue with the poet with the beloved Shevchenko to whom he wrote this funeral march. Let's listen to the dialogue. This is one person. And left hand answers. and then we have something interesting we have a new material
drama. And then we have the second part, like the second bigger part, which is also a march, but to me it has the character of proudness. Um, so as we know already, because I read for you, both uh, Lysenko and Shevchenko were very proud to be Ukrainians. And here we can feel this proudness, this very beautiful patriotic proudness. <laughs> starts the middle part and now let's compare because I really would love us all to hear a little Chopin's middle part of his of course very famous uh, funeral march but let's compare First, the beginning and the rhythm, long, and then one, two, three, four, five, short, right? And this is the first thing. And second thing, the ending of this phrase. The last two bars, just listen to them. Let's hear the Lysenko's march. Long, short, 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 short. This is inspiration from Chopin. It's the same. 
So I'm, I'm very sure that it's the kind of commemoration of Chopin and the quotation of his unforgettable funeral march. Okay, then this theme is repeated again with octaves. <laughs> new melody and again the ending of the first melody Second time this new melody and the, the climax. Second, uh, this, I mean, the repetition of part A, we will have much more of the first melody, and we will have a, every all the melodies that we appeared before together at the at close to the end. Let's listen. like the first theme was this poet and when it appears again the last time this is like this 
a symbol that he will be immortal through his art. I can feel that Lysenko was very inspired when he composed this. I can feel how much he loved his country and how much he loved Chopin as well. And what I like the most about this piece is the fact that in just one piece of music, tonight we could get to know two the most important Ukrainian artists from uh, 19th century. Thank you for watching until now and let's somehow stop this terrible war that has no sense and let's stop the suffering of all these innocent people who lost their houses, who have to escape. Every war is bad. Every war that was in the past, also in my lifetime, is something terrible. It's, there are no words to describe. But this war is especially close to my country and as I told you, I know many people from this country, so that's why I feel it so deeply. Thank you again and see you. Bye-bye.